Hi everyone, this is Guillaume from Tuxcorp. Today we are going to host a website in an S3 bucket with Cloudflare to act as a CDN, DNS, reverse proxy, and SSL certificate provider. With S3 buckets, you can host file, but you can also activate the static website function to host a website as long as you have only static files, like HTML, CSS, and images. Serving our website from Cloudflare comes with a lot of perks, like catching your static website in the edge location from Cloudflare, and also inherits the advantage of a WAF DDoS protection from Cloudflare and encrypted in-transit SSL certificates. And all of the Cloudflare part is for free. You will pay for hosting file in S3, but if you're still in the free tier and your amount of data is less than 5 gigabytes, it will be free for the first year in AWS. Furthermore, my AWS bill for running a website in S3 is about one cent a month. This solution is the equivalent of running AWS CloudFront with the AWS WAF and ACM, so Amazon Certificate Manager, in front of our S3 bucket, which is going to cost you more. Still, if you have the free tier, you won't probably pay for CloudFront and the ACM service is free for providing any public certificate even outside of the free tier. Let's come back to our first solution. If we just enable the static website in S3, the bucket will be open to everyone with a bucket policy that looks like this. This is something I would like to avoid as we are using Cloudflare as a reverse proxy. There is no need of exposing the bucket directly to the entire internet. In this example today, we would like to secure this, so only Cloudflare will be able to reach my public bucket. To achieve this, we need a bucket policy that restrain our bucket only to Cloudflare. And that will look like that. As you can see here, there is a condition that only the IP address from Cloudflare will be able to access our bucket. You can find this IP public range from Cloudflare on their website directly. Here's the web page where you can find this IP range. As this IP could potentially change over time, we are going to create an AWS Lambda function to pull these IPs from the Cloudflare API and then generate a bucket policy to push it to our S3 bucket. This way, we will run it one time from our Lambda. But to run this Lambda function in an automated manner, we will create a rule in Event Bridge to run it once a day. So if there is any new IP from Cloudflare, it's going to be added to our bucket policy automatically once a day. The Lambda that we are going to use in our case will look like this. The first part of the Lambda function is going to reach to the Cloudflare API in order to get the IPv4 and v6 CIDR blocks that we've seen before. The second part of the Lambda function is going to create the bucket policy and push it to S3 and our bucket policy. So in order to achieve this, we need to have our domain name in Cloudflare website. Your domain name needs to be served by Cloudflare. If you don't have a domain, you can register one directly from this section. If you have a domain which is not served by Cloudflare, you can add the site to Cloudflare in here. Then, in your current registrar, you need to point the name server to the ones that Cloudflare will provide. It might take a few minutes for the domain to be imported in Cloudflare. Once your domain is ready in Cloudflare, we can add to AWS console. Go to S3 by typing S3 in the AWS console. Create bucket. You should name your bucket as your domain is going to look at the end. So for me, it's going to be Choose the AWS region of your choice. Then disable block public access settings for this bucket as the bucket is going to be public. Check this box. 
then create bucket. Look for the bucket that you just created. Click on your bucket name. Go to properties. Look for the section with static website hosting, which is at the end. Click on edit. Enable. Specify the index document. For us, it's going to be index.html. Save change. Now we need to create the bucket policy. For now, we are not going to use the Lambda yet and check if our S3 bucket is working with the static website enabled. Go to the bucket policy. Edit, and then paste the first version of the policy. The policies are going to be available in a GitHub repository. It's available in the description of the video. Save changes. Let's upload some files to the bucket. Then upload. All right, let's close this. Let's find the link to our website. Properties, end of the page. That should be the link. So if I click on this, the website is now hosted on S3 and it's publicly available to everyone. Let's go back to the S3 bucket and copy-paste this URL. Now let's go to Cloudflare, to our domain name, DNS, add a record, select CNAME, that part is for the subdomain, in our case that's start page, target, I'm going to paste the URL that I copy before, I am going to remove the HTTP slash slash. The important part here is the proxy status. As it's enabled, it means Cloudflare is going to use a CDN to serve it. Also, it's going to be served with the SSL certificate provided by Cloudflare. Click on save. And now open a new tab and let's go to our website. I'm going to use HTTPS too. That's it. Our website is hosted by Cloudflare. And as you can see here, HTTPS is working. The connection is secure. The certificate is valid. And the certificate is provided by Cloudflare. If I go back to the S3 console, I can see the bucket is still available to everyone outside of my URL served by Cloudflare. Now let's create a Lambda function that will generate a bucket policy. This bucket policy is going to limit the bucket to be reachable only from Cloudflare, so the bucket is not going to be public to anyone directly, but only through our URL. Let's go back to AWS. Search for Lambda. Let's create a function. Name it as you want. I'm going to select the runtime of Python.
let's create the function. We are going to copy paste our function in this section. Click on deploy. As you can see here, I'm using an environment variable. So I'm going to create this variable bucket name and that will be equal to my bucket name. Go to configuration, environment variable, edit, add environment variable, key, bucket name, value, the name of my bucket. Click on save. Test. Name it as you want. Click on save. Before we can test our lambda function, we need to give permission to the lambda function to modify the bucket policy of our S3 bucket. Let's use a role for lambda and add a policy that is going to give this permission. Configuration, permission. Let's go to this role. We need to create the policy. Let's go to policies in another tab. Create policy. Choose a service, S3. Let's go in permission management, put bucket policy. Now we need to add the IRN of the bucket. Let's put our bucket name. Add, click on next. Next, we need to name our policy. Create policy. Now let's go back to our role. We need to add the permissions, attach policy. You should try to refresh the page sometime. It might not be there. Let's search for our policy. And attach. Now the Lambda function should be able to put the bucket policy in our bucket. Let's go back to our Lambda function. Let's go in code and click on test. Looks like it works. Let's go to the S3 bucket so we can see if the policy has changed. And here we can see the IP range from Cloudflare is now here. Great. Let's see if the website is still working. Looks like everything is fine. And let's see if the website is reachable directly from the S3. This is the S3. Reload. And now it's forbidden. So this is what we wanted. Now we want to automate this so it can run every day in an automated manner. Let's head to Evanbridge where we can create a rule to run this Lambda once every day. Let's search for Evanbridge. Let's 
Let's go in rules. Create rule. Name it as you want. I'm going to select schedule as we want to run it once a day. You can select the second option. So it's easier than writing a cron ourselves. Doing this this way, Eventbridge is going to run it once a day. To confirm it's working, I'm going to run it every minute and modify the S3 bucket policy to see if the Eventbridge rule is working. You should select day here, not minute, as for me it's just a test. I'm going to select our lambda function now. If you cannot find your function, um, take a look about where you're currently located. In my case, my function is located in Canada, not in Virginia. So select the region that you created your function. Then you should be able to find it. Click on next. And create rule. Let's go to S3. Uh, you are not obliged to do this. I'm going to modify the S3 policy and wait a few minutes to see if the event bridge is currently working. Click on edit. Now let's wait a few minutes to see if uh, the full IP range of Cloudflare is coming back in my policy. A few moments later. After a few minutes, I can see the bucket policy was updated automatically by our Lambda function through an event bridge rule. I am going to modify the rule to set it once a day. It doesn't need to run every minute. Together, we have achieved to create a static website in a S3 bucket. It's now served by Cloudflare and only Cloudflare can reach the static website. Cloudflare is providing a DNS to point to the S3 bucket. There is also a reverse proxy from them, its cache, and an SSL certificate has been issued. WAF and DDoS protection are also provided. So congrats everyone, I hope you liked the video and I see you next time.